Good evening, Borough of Bath. It is your Borough Manager, Brad Flynn, and we are after hours here at the Borough Hall. I wanted to give everyone a just a personal face-to-face -face, um, message instead of text. I think I've seen like enough text on the uh, Facebook world last, last me a lifetime. Um, but it's all good, right? Look, this the public service. Um, you know, we have Facebook here. We have a forum. You know, you need to be able to comment. You have questions, concerns. You need to be able to have that that dialogue. And it's going to be, I think, important now more than ever going forward, especially in the era of misinformation, disinformation, things like that. Um, I, I want to make this post uh, two reasons I have. The first being I want to level with everyone in that, you know, this week I caught the tail end of, of some of the things that were happening on Facebook and I didn't catch it in time to not have a, a post deleted. And uh, so I want to talk about that deleted post and then I want to uh, offer comment on the Michael Long post. I think it was yesterday, the 16th, I think it was. He's got questions um, uh, that I want to address through this post instead of writing everything up and whatnot. I just thought it'd be a nice change of pace. But to go back to the uh, the post earlier in the week, I'm going to apologize to everyone. You know, that that wasn't, that's not policy to to censor anybody on the public page or to delete posts. It's unacceptable. I've said it before in a previous post, we're dealing with it internally. We don't talk about employment matters uh, publicly. Um, I'm not happy about the post being deleted. It's happened, it's gone. I can't bring it back. So if we have to talk to the ACLU, we'll talk to the ACLU. That's it's it's fine. I get it. Look, you know, I, I think of a municipality, if you're constantly doing that or knowingly doing that, you know, sure, there could be there could be a case out there uh waiting. And we all gotta go to Philly, you know, federal court. So nobody wants to do that. So again, I apologize to everybody for that. We're trying to get better at Facebook at doing the content. I think we should be doing more of the content. I think we should be interacting with you more out there. But uh, it, it takes time to develop. You need policies on it. You know, all that said, you just can't say, the, you know, you can't put obscenities out there. You can't threaten violence. You can't use obscenities in the course of violence. You know, some of those things are not protected under the First Amendment. So I would just caution you there. Uh, and then now to the rest of this, I want to go into Michael Long's post. You know, it's carryover from his comments that he made um, on November, November the 7th in a public meeting. And if and if folks aren't aware, when you come to a public meeting and you want to speak at a public meeting, you have to state your name, you have to state your address for the record because the borough council will accept comments from those who are taxpayers or residents of the borough. So it's part of the record. And uh, being singled out, look, uh, I have a very strong stance on, again, disinformation, misinformation. I'm not, I don't wanna hear it. I don't wanna hear it. You know, we work too hard here. Our council works too hard here. My staff works too hard here. Public works works too hard here. And, if there's something to foul, we're just going to correct it. And uh, I want to share it too, because I I'm you know look I'm a astronomy buff. I like I like a lot of that stuff, and I do I follow a lot of the of teachings of uh, Dr. Tyson, and uh, he's an astro astrophysicist and he's a renowned thinker. And you know he had made mention that one of the uh, great challenges of this world is knowing enough about a subject to think you're right, but not enough about that subject to know when you're wrong. So I think that's, I think that's important here because in Mr. Long's case, because we've, we've had these discussions and I'll be honest, I've had email conversations with him that go back uh, over a year ago. And it just seems like we're doing the same things over and over. So I don't know how to break that cycle. And sometimes I guess if you've explained yourself enough or objective truth, right? Once you've kind of gone over that and over that, I have not, like I have nothing else to give you. And I, I, I would have to move on then at that point. If, you, if you're just, your personal beliefs 
are such that you can't overcome the objective truth of what's been delivered. I can't help you. I can't, I just simply can't. Um, so moving on from that, I wanted to get into the things that he had put online here. And I have to say, like when this opened up, I saw the a question for you, you know, Bradford, uh, why do we pay an office worker 8,922 miles in 2020? So first I'm like, huh, oh, what the, how did that happen? Right. And then I was getting into the 58.2 cents per mile. And then I saw I needed to divide by this and multiply by that. And uh, I'll be honest, like my head exploded. It literally, I it, it threw me back like into high school. And I'm sure we all remember that problem. You know, if train A is leaving a Chicago station and traveling 75 miles and it's heading east and that train B from New York is heading 95 miles west, what time were they? So like all these formulas are just like wrapping around my head. And I, I was I was getting anxiety when I started to read that. Um, but what Michael Long is 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 driving at the point here is I receive a vehicle. Well, I did. I used to receive a vehicle allowance from the borough. Um, what you have to understand is borough councils, they change, they fluctuate, they cycle through and there's different leadership, council presidents, right? So our former council president and the council at that time, in one of the first agreements, employment agreements that they've done with me, it was to do a vehicle allowance. And it's just added cash to the paycheck for my vehicle, fuel, maintenance costs, because they know I was going to district court. They knew I was going to county court. They knew I was going to Harrisburg uh, for different things. And that's what they decided to do. So. Um, this information, so Michael Long had had submitted rights in our request and rightfully for my employment agreement. And that is a public doc. You know, if we have it. He has it. You can have it. I could care less. And in fact, if you post it, Michael, you're probably helping my colleagues because they're always, everyone's looking for um, contracts to see who's got what. Uh, but uh, no, we, we he, well, what I'm trying to get at is he's got the contract and nowhere in the contract does it give mileage. So I don't even know why we're representing the mileage issue, the IRS thing. So it was $5,000. It was added to the base. I have a base salary and then it was 5000 for that. Um, and we're going to touch upon, I think, in later on in his comments about some other lines I might have been paid paid out of. Uh, and the vehicle allowance, so it was $5,000 and it adjusted with cost of living. Uh, dependent on if the PA bulletin. So if Harrisburg released new COLA numbers, cost of living adjustments for that year, whatever that percentage was, then I would uh, also, I would get that. Uh, just realized, that I'm not sharing this with you guys. Sorry about that. Let's get you shared up. Okay, I think we're in there now. Um, so I was just explaining this here. This stuff in here. Okay. And then he gets into now, admittedly, I don't see you outside of your office, but for the occasional photo op. But I suppose I wouldn't if you spent part of your day driving back and forth to the end of the borough 34 times. Um, I just want to kind of stay here for a second. Uh and and I know of Michael Long. I know, I know he, you know, he walks around town. I mean, it's a small town, right? Um, I think he's about my age. You know, I'm 41, I think. Sometimes I don't even remember. I think he's 43. Able body, right? So um there's a lot of opportunities to volunteer. Like I understand doing all this. I get like I'll be honest, because I kind of used to be this way too. I used to challenge. I used to challenge all the time. I used to challenge, and when I used to live in Tennessee, I'll just be honest, I used to go to meetings there. There's probably stuff out there on me, actually. But anyway, so I kind of relate. I'll be honest. I kind of re I kind of relate with Mr. Long. But anyway, I, I want to let me get back to the the there's been a lot of opportunities for volunteerism here in the borough. And I get wanting to protect your town because if you think something's up, you know, you want to you want to save it. From the. Uh, 
from the grips of, of evildoers, right? So I, I understand. But there's more than one way to help a town. So you, there's potentially doing this, right? Or when we need volunteers to do certain things. So at Kith County Park, we, this is going back six years ago, we were planting trees there. We needed volunteers. I was there. When the mayor had concrete delivered for free at the Kiff County Pavilion, we had to tear up the whole pavilion floor and then we laid six inch floor there and it was 20 by 30. It was a really big project. I had actually never laid concrete before. That was the first time. Like I had my fire boots on and I'm wading through concrete. Um, but the point is volunteerism, volunteer job. We look for folks in the community, um, but I was there. And you know, in the in the neighborhood where Mr. Long lives, we were planting arborvitae trees there to, you know, make that area look better. We all know about the transfer area of, of Creek Road. And uh, we've improved it in recent years. Uh, but we needed volunteers to plant arms. I was there. I was there. And please, I'm not, you know, this isn't about, you know, me, me, me. It's, I'm just, I need to level with everyone, right? I mean, I think what happens a lot of time in your inner circles, the folks that know me, that know council, uh, you, 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 the inner core knows us and knows what goes on, but there's a lot of you out there that don't. You really don't. You only hear what you hear or see on Facebook. I mean, that might be the only contact and the only resource that you have. So I think this is important, right? I think it's important to kind of dive into these things. Um, and then when we went to paint the pump house, right, on Creek Road, it was nasty, a lot of graffiti, just, just bad vibe, right? We wanted to get that painted so that we're gonna have an artist do a mural on that project. Mayor Fee, once again, fantastic endeavor. Needed volunteers for that. I was there, I was there. I spent my Saturday away from my family to be with Bath's family. And that's what I've done throughout my career here. A lot, actually. Um, you know, I was on a ladder that day, almost two stories up to the peak, painting with a handful of other people. And um, it's normally never a question with me. When we need creek cleanup, I haven't done the recent creek cleans up cleanups, but in the beginning, yeah, I was there needing volunteers. I waded through Monocacy Creek to pick up trash and garbage and, and, um, you know, that's who I am. This, our, our Bath firefighters, you know, for years, they've been looking to get the flagpole put in. They needed a flagpole to the front of the building. Firefighting is something near and dear to my heart. I love that fire department. I love our men and women up there. I love what they do. And when I heard that they needed the flagpole, I, I was going to figure it out, how to get them that flagpole. And there's, there was a time where I, so I volunteered because I couldn't do it, you know, and any other time I need to work, right? And we dug the hole. Sign me up. I was there. I guess the point is, you know, Mike, you, you've been here for 43 years, right? Um, we've needed all these opportunities for volunteerism to make this community better. And um, you weren't there. You weren't there. So I guess just take that as a point of reflection, right? I'm not trying to bash. I'm just saying that's it's the facts, right? It's just, it's factual. Um, so this post goes on to talk about receptionists, the clerk, people that we needed in the borough. And then didn't she just quit uh, without notice after all but running the borough for years? Um, I'm not going to get into past or present employee issues or matters. I have a, you know, a, a respect and I will defend their integrity. I mean, that's just flat out. Um, I'll tell you that lo losing my office administrator was difficult. That was very difficult. Very difficult. And as a leader, you you will always have, you'll carry with you the burden of what was the question you didn't ask? What was the situation? What didn't you do to uh, kind of get in there further to, uh, you know, save 
you know, keep them, keep them here. You know, what, what couldn't, what, what, what didn't we, what didn't we do? So, but, you know, people have come and gone here. I have had a, it's been a difficult run in seven and a half years with, uh, with personnel. It's no joke. Uh, the next part here, you know, this was laughable. Uh, so it is laughable. I'm sorry. It's noteworthy that the dues and subscriptions listed under the borough manager hovered around 2,000 to 2,500 in your first two years. So at 326, then it shot over 5,000 in 2018. Then in 2019, over 7,000. And this is the kicker. This is the big story of the night. Channel 6, Action News. I love Jim Garner, by the way. I think he's fantastic. I can't believe he's retired already. But in 2020, when you got your pilot's license, it skyrockets up to almost $12,500. So the suggestion there is, hang on a minute. <laughs> All right. The suggestion here is that the borough of Bath is paying for my pilot license stuff. And that's an absolute falsehood, 100% falsehood. It's not even in my contract. You have my employee contract, look that up. Where would it be in there? They have not paid for my pilot's license or any of that stuff. My pilot's license was near and dear to me. I'm going to tell everybody why, because the borough never paid for it, all right? I was going through a divorce in the, at that time, 2017. It was, a, it was a crappy divorce. I'd been with somebody a long time. And divorces as they are, it's, it sucks. It sucks. It's really, you get beat up. It's bad. So I'm trying to do my job here. We were just getting ready to jump from the old building to the new building. So I had that on my mind. Um, but I wanted to accomplish something, and, and piloting is something that I, I've always wanted to do, and um, I wanted to build my confidence back up after, you know, what I, what I went through, and that's what I did, and I, I did it. I achieved it, and so the point there is the date's still on the line, all right? So my pilot's license, I got that. It was July 29th of 2018. And then the last time I flew was September the 10th of 2019. I met my now wife who clipped my wings. There is no more flying for the Flynn boy, um, which is so sad because if, unless you've done that kind of stuff, it's just amazing. Um, there's nothing like leaving the surface of the earth and you're, in, you're the one in control of that. I mean, there's no no greater feeling. If you have an opportunity to do it, you need to do it. Mike, anybody. So no, the borough has not paid uh, my pilot's license stuff. The dues and subscriptions, however, I will say, again, in those years, uh, the, the big thing that was occurring was what? Uh, 2017, 18. We were moving. We moved from the old building to the new building. So we didn't have the kind of technology that we have now in the new building because we modernized. We modernized our operations. You know, we put a lot of money into a server. We have updated machines, emails, uh, virus protection, new uh, internet service provider uh, providing, I'm sorry, just new internet service. We upgraded uh, faster download speeds. So our dues and subscriptions come out of that line to handle all the borough's IT stuff. And um, that's where it comes from. And that's why it balloons and it's, it continues to rise over time because of the different things that we're doing to modernize. You know, the conversations I'm having now, you know, we may have to start uh, scrubbing protection on emails because we keep getting fished. We keep getting people that are getting into our network and it's a constant struggle. And it's unfortunate in this day and age, but it's what you have to do, right? So um, we go on to documents, uh, oh, document all of his claims uh, on his Facebook group, which is, Great, that's fine. Um, wonderful. Free speech, love it. And then we go, okay, we're gonna go back before the year that I started. And I started here in the Borough of Bath 2015, 2015. So uh, year eight is coming up. 
long eight, let me tell you. But it's been fun too. Um, we're talking about what salary? Salary went from sixty thousand a year, and then the position still raised to twelve thousand in two thousand thirteen from forty eight thousand. I, I, you know, I read that, and I'm just like, well, let's go, let's just go back to nineteen eighty five. I bet the salary was ten thousand. I have no idea. Things have, have changed, man. I mean, uh, councils, councils that have been sitting at least in the recent years. I mean, they have a uh, much better understanding uh, the, of the benefit of professional management. They understand that. And they've been working over the years to get there. And so here you are. I mean, I don't know. Then dissolve the stuff. Uh, get a council all that wants not, nothing to do with it. I don't know what to say. <laughs> but things change, Mike. And, th and things have changed economically from 2012 through 2020, uh, 2022. I mean, come on. It just is what it is. Uh, he wishes that people would read the budgets. I wish people would read the budgets too. <laughs> it takes so much time to put that stuff together. And then, you know, you just barely, you barely get feedback. I mean, I work with council and they're all the time looking at it and they ask me questions and we have to have good heart to hearts and it's wonderful. So what else do we got? So we go back into my salary in 2021, 66,000. All right, yeah, some of this. The past borough council president and the past council that he was leading, the philosophy was to, I will say this, Mike, it's good that you're looking at some of that stuff because a lot of people don't. And, you know, municipalities, I, I've seen this where, you know, you and we've done it. Uh, we've done it here where there's a base salary paid out of one line. It's a good pickup. I'm just going to say it's a good pickup. There's a base salary maybe in one line, like a bum manager line, and then there might be salary paid from the code enforcement line. And then I have the vehicle allowance. So there might be different areas that you can generate the overall compensation for me. Would you, my suggestion, you can look at there's, you know, uh, end of year W-2s. I mean, that, that tells you what the, what the compensation was, right? So but some information on there is redacted because it's personal, but I'm just saying. So it's not that I was getting $20,000 raises. It's that my salary had been coming from different areas because of the work that I was being asked to do uh, in different areas. And then um, we did away with that. Uh, this last year, we did away with it. We just said, which I totally agree with because it, it just creates more questions when you're well, you're paid for here and you're paid for there and you know just what what's the salary i mean i agree what's the salary it should just be what that number is you know bingo um and i'll be honest again council the council's here this town has done a great job with bringing everybody my position office secretary's position public works department we're doing a great job trying to keep everybody uh, within their positional, positionally surveyed wage rates, according to the Pennsylvania State Association of Boroughs for the Southeast Pennsylvania region. We try to just keep current with that. It, it's hard sometimes to pick and choose and say, well, why don't you just go off of Freemansburg or why don't you go off Academy or why don't you go off of uh, Chapman? They're very small sample sizes. So it's good to get a wider area, especially when, you, when you're talking uh, regional economics and things like that. And we look at a lot of different factors. We look at the county, we look at Lehigh Valley, we look at PSATs, that's the Pennsylvania, oh uh, shoot, State, State Association of Townships. We also look at PSABs. Um, and we try to stay about average. You know, we're not, we're not leading the pack, you know, by any stretch of the means. And raises are typically, you know, three to four percent. I mean, and it, when you we think about that, you know, we're like everywhere else. We're just trying to keep on top of inflation because it's been, especially in the last three years, right? So that's what that next paragraph. If we get into this twenty k twenty k pay increase, this is not true. I, you know, the, my the salary was spread over different lines, but then combined in one year. So yes, it draws a question, but. Um, it just was a, it was a consolidation is all it was. 
Um, I don't assume anybody's done. That's kind of upsetting. You know, I'm, I'm, I don't understand that. Oh, the 40K. Right. So we're going back into, well, you're paying 40K in this new line for bookkeeping services. And since you're the town treasurer, you must be getting that. I can tell you I'm not getting that. I am not getting an additional 40,000. My, my salary right now is 86 for and change. I am not getting anything more than that. <laughs> it's in my agreement. Just read that. Um, the 40,000 is being paid towards uh, the bookkeeping services. We have FRS. It is a mother daughter combo and they are brilliant. They are brilliant minds when it comes to, um, when it comes to the bookkeeping end and accounting. And they're, this has been just rock solid for our audits and things like that. Cause they really know the ins and outs on how things should be, should be booked. Um, and that's important for my job as treasurer because I, I have to oversee all the all the funding. And so we need the most accurate reports and we need to be able to report to the state accordingly. So it was a change up from years past. We used to have a full-time pay position there, but when you look at what we should have been paying, honestly, we should have been paying for somebody in that seat. Um, you weren't gonna touch it for what uh, um, you know, FRS can do. And sometimes you got to look at that as a municipality, you know, what we should be outsourcing um, to make things easier here uh, and making the reports the best they can be. Oh, uh, do, 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 do. I can show you line. Okay, the tax increase, the 1.7 million increase. And he, what we're trying to get in here, I think, from the post is the trash billing. I think the trash billing is a good question, but the trash billing is in a separate fund than the general fund where tax revenues are pulled from. And so there was a contracted amount for JP Medicare. I'll take Mike at his word that it's 375. I don't have anything in front of me. Um, I'm as raw as, as I can be right now. I know the 999 households is not right. It wasn't that high. Anyway, uh, when we calculate the administrative costs, because there's costs to run the program. It's like with any business, you have costs to run the program. You have, you have secretarial bookkeeping. You have to consult with a lawyer from, from time to time. And there are variable costs. And those costs will change over time, over the three-year uh, life of the contract. Our estimates were about 56 bucks, right? So. I recommended another 25, make it 75 even and keep it that way for the next three years going forward. Uh, and council ultimately agreed with that. Um, and it, it's a guess, right? It's a guess that your costs will be covered in the program, but there's a chance it might not. And then general fund may have to subsidize anyway. And that was the philosophy under the former council president and that council. It was just subsidized out of the general fund. So uh, we couldn't do that anymore. It, it, it's the, the MSW fund needs to float on its own. Yes, there's the collection rate. It's not as high. I think there was another number in there. As far as collection, we are not getting the collection rate, I think, assumed in the post. But that's where it comes from. And it is true. It's 495. I'm sorry. It's $450 from February to May 31st. And then after May 31st, it'll go up to... $495. That's a 10% penalty. So we're trying to get folks to pay the bill within five months of it being of it being issued. Um uh, he alludes to in this post uh, dive into an insurance situation. Um the borough is authorized by the borough code to offer the mayor, her spouse, and council members insurance, health insurance. We get a, a decent rate because we're in a shared pool for insurance. And the it's an unwritten policy here, but the way it works is if a council member of the mayor is gonna partake in the health insurance, then they have to, they gotta pay that back. They have to pay the monthly, the monthly dues. I will say that um, when we look back to the records, we had some accounting issues on how things were booked and some things got missed as far as payment. And the, uh, the, mayor, the mayor's insurance 
payments, they've been caught up to date. So, um, you know, it was for us, it was good to catch that and to make sure that we were, we were back sound and that's what we did. So that was basically, that is the gist of that, the, the big post. And then there was a follow-up down here. I also, I also do have by policy here at the borough, uh, again, it's council, it's council approved. We have a vacation buyback for exempt employees. I mean, I'm an exempt employee. I don't get paid overtime. So it was just another benefit for me and I appreciated it. And it's, and it's fantastic. Cause I can't always take time off. There's just too much going on. The IRS rate doesn't apply. I can't restore. So we're at point two here. I can't restore the mayor that whatever happened earlier this week. Uh, I've been looking for it. I've tried to look for it. I, I don't have it. Um, so, you know, it's, I, you know, going forward, it's not happening again. We're not censoring people on the, on the Facebook. So again, my apologies and my apologies to you, Mike, on that and others who were in that feed that had some things blown off of there. And we talked about the trash bill 2023 and who is in charge of bookkeeping for the borough. And I mentioned it was uh, FRS bookkeeping. So uh, it's on a vendor basis, they're a professional service provider. So their vendor, they charge us by month and then um, we pay the bill. So and it fluctuates, we get a cheaper rate with the daughter than we do with mom who runs the business and she is the lead. And, um, and so, that's where we're at with that. So I appreciate the post, you know, these things. I just, going back to what I said earlier, I think it's important that, you know, the, the saying should kind of ring true. You know, one of the greatest challenges in this world is knowing enough about a subject to think you're right, um, but not enough about that subject to know when you're wrong. And that's where calling us, talking to us offline instead of doing what we're doing here publicly. I think it would go a long way, uh, but it's probably, I don't know, probably not gonna happen, but it's fine. Uh, for everyone else, uh, that's pretty much it. And if there are any other questions or comments, sorry it took so long, but there was a lot of information to kind of get through here, um, but no biggie. It's fine. And, um, you know, I want people to know as well that I have, you know, extended family here you know, through marriage. I have my children's grandparents that live here in this town. So a lot of what we do, trust me, I am very conscious and aware of that. And I, I, I'm very worried about the things that, that go on because I worry about them, you know, and it's, it's, them and it's all the other 26 198 of us in this town so i get it and uh i appreciate the the outreach here and if there's any other questions or comments please go ahead and leave those and that is it i gotta get out of here it's 9 18 i need to get home to the family so peace everybody see ya Good night.